I don't know if I've mentioned this yet, but like this homeowner is one of our biggest fans online. You know, we met her about 12 years ago at the home and garden shows, and she's always hyping us up, giving us kudos on the job that we did. There's no way I can let this project be a failure whatsoever. And I told her that she was gonna have a yard by Christmas. That's like less than a week away. And this morning I wasn't seeing near the progress that I need to see. And so we got not quite all hands on deck, but we got a full crew here, double crew. We got sales guys here. We're gonna bust this thing out. We're gonna get caught up and we're gonna be in way better shape by the end of this day, end of the weekend. Welcome to Heiner Outdoor Living. We're a team of yardists taking boring, cookie-cutter yards and transforming them into one-of-a-kind backyard retreats. Join us as we bring quality, passion, and fun to yards all across the Colorado Front Range, inspiring life outside. What's up, guys? It's Matt with Heiner Outdoor Living. And we've got a new project that we're starting here for you today. I'm excited to show you this one. It's a smaller backyard, but it's got all my favorite features. We've got the fire pit, a water feature, and a patio. We were working with the homeowner long before they even broke ground on the house. She provided us with the, uh, the plot plan and the builder said that, yep, this is a level lot. We're gonna have a level backyard to work with. And so I was thinking worst case scenario, we'll build this, uh, we'll, we'll design this out. We might have to add a step or two. Well, now that we're here and we're building, I've had to add four steps to the back. And so uh, with that 30 inch grade change, it kind of changed up a few things. I've been working with the concrete guys and um, adjusting some of our forms here on the fly because I want to make sure that we're not sacrificing on um, you know, the experience that you're going to have when you're done with this uh, backyard space. Because when you're back here, I want it to still feel um, roomy and I still want it to be big enough for everything. And because we still do have the space, I just am going to have to move a few things around and to do that, I want to make sure that it's still looking good and we're keeping that uh, design integrity high. This is an advantage of working with a design build company as opposed to just a contractor or as opposed to just a designer. Um, we take 100% responsibility of the entire process and so when you're working with us, we're going to be out here, we're going to look at these things, we're going to ensure that these details are executed flawlessly all the way to the very end. I'm doing a fire pit that I've never done before. This is actually going to be flush with the ground here. So uh, we we're trying to design on a budget and design something that's going to be a little bit more progressive. This is going to be at patio level. We're going to create a hole here and there's going to be some stuff underground. And so uh, we've already got our gas line in. And the next thing that we got to think about is where is this water going to go? We're going to have some metal pieces under here. We want to make sure that we're not containing that. So we're going to have to catch this out make sure that there's a, a path for that water when it rains that it can get out. The next challenge that it brought is we have a key valve that we normally just put into the side of the fire pit that you turn on and off to uh, open up and close the gas. Uh, well with this one I don't have the, uh, the side to be able to do that so I had to think of where am I going to put the key valve, how am I going to turn this off, how am I going to make the connections once I do it. I actually designed this one back in spring, here we are. Uh, in December and I find it finally just clicked and we just came up with the detail of how we're gonna uh, excavate this out create a pocket underground and then just pour the concrete to become a cap and then it's gonna give me access underneath it so we can make our connections just drill a hole straight through the top of the concrete we'll still have all the drainage everything is gonna be clean and that problem is solved This is where the pan will be. Uh, pan will sit about three inches below finished concrete. And then we need to, to figure out what we were doing with the gas line. So the gas line's coming in here. This will get pushed down. And then we created this box right here. We used the foam for the forming. And the concrete will come right over top of this. And so what this is gonna do is it's gonna create this pocket. This way we'll be able to draw, uh, drill a hole through for our key valve and make the connections underneath. It'll be clean, hidden. You won't even know how we did it. And then anything, any moisture that gets in will come down to the drain that we've got all the way here and get piped out downhill.
We've got a deadline of mid next week. I think we can do it. It's a small enough space, but there's a lot still to do and a lot going on. You know, I can get a peek of how the concrete is looking. Uh, I believe they're coming back here today or uh, tomorrow to do our saw cuts to just turn this into like the those uh, linear slabs that we've got in the design. Uh, the fire pit is actually going in today, so that's gonna get all hooked up. I've got one guy on our team, Omar, as you guys all know. He's uh, the most experienced with artificial turf, and so we, uh, we did just get an approved change order to trade this out from sod to the artificial turf, and so I gotta get him here because he's going on vacation for Christmas, and he's gonna be gone next Wednesday, and we're not even close to being ready for him to come in and, and help this crew out. Let's see if we can get there. I originally designed it with three. The first three years. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that, that would have been a tight squeeze. That would have been a little over the top. I like that it's in scale, it just matches the overall yard. It's still gonna give us the desired sound that we want. And it'll be good. We got the Stax Light Sphere. This is a fiberglass material. It comes in like four different pieces, so out of the box, you just take them up. We put them together, they twist and snap in. Uh, plumbing goes in and now we just put the pump. This thing is an easy install too guys. You can do this in a half day. This is a great DIY too. So even if you see this and you want to add this to your yard, you can come to our retail store and check this out and get that right there and weekend project and you got sound of water in your backyard in, in two days flat. Concrete guys made it back Friday afternoon, and as you can see, they put the uh, saw cut lines in. And what I did from a design standpoint was we des uh, we've got these two foot kind of bars that are sticking in and out. My intent and purpose behind that was to take something that's normally just a boring gray slab of concrete and just elevate it to another level. You know, it's still that same economical material, but by doing this, it makes it feel and look really high-end, really luxurious, without breaking the bank. I was just working with my team and we were looking at like all the yards that we can see from where we are. We got just a grass patch in the middle. It's a rectangle with these rounded corners. And then you look at the next one, it's a, you know, a grass patch, rectangle with rounded corners. Rounded corner, rectangle with rounded corners, rectangle with rounded corners, all the way as far as I can see. And then you got this yard. And the character and the uniqueness that this just brings just makes them stand out. You know, that's one of the reasons, you know, I'm uh, I'm so hard on my design team is because I want to make sure that when you're coming with our company that we're actually bringing something really special to the table that you're not going to get just a cookie cutter backyard. As we think outside the box, we're pushing the boundaries. We're really trying to find a way to just tap in with your personality, your lifestyle, and bring it all together with something that's just a, a work of art at the end of the day. Christmas is in two days and there's still a lot to do. We've got some of the plants in, some of the rocks starting to go in. We're having to move a couple things around just to make sure that we're accommodating some of these tweaks from the grade changes. And so I'm really particular. You know, I'm seeing a tree that's literally just 10 inches off and I'm having the guys move it because I wanna make sure that it's dialed in. We've got like a sharp slope over there that we weren't accounting for. So we're having to bring in a couple of boulders just to level that off so we're not eroding away and we're keeping the integrity of this grass area. You know, we're not just coming in, trying to get it done quick and cheap. We're, we've got your best interest in mind. We're thinking of the value and the time savers and it's gonna be a lot less expensive to do it right the first time than it is to have to come in later, rip it out and redo it again. What's left still to get this to the finish line is get the rest of the plants in the ground, get the drip hooked up. I gotta put the, uh, uh, the finishing touches on the fire pit. We gotta get all the rock uh, and fabric installed. Uh, and then it's just a, a, a general cleanup. I wanna make sure that we're good. There's some you know, piles and, and debris in the front that we've get cleaned up. All right, we gotta get out of here. We got more job sites to go to, more episodes to film. If you liked this episode though, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, give us a comment, a thumbs up, thumbs down. I don't care. We're just glad that you're here. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week.